on May 6 each year, World Maternal Mental Health Awareness Day is celebrated. It is a time of the year when we all come together to help mothers and help babies. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're new here, a very warm welcome to you. World Maternal Mental Health Awareness Day draws attention to mental health concerns surrounding mothers and their babies. As a new mom who has experienced many challenges throughout my pregnancy, I am appreciative to all the healthcare professionals who were there to help support me during that time. In this video, I share with you my story around mental health. This story was also shared previously during a Survivor Facebook Live challenge. Let's take a look. Good morning, beautiful people. <laughs> I am so excited. I am at one of my favorite beaches in Sydney. I hope you guys can see this. It's amazing. Over there, you can see Bear Island. It's already full. It is eight o'clock. And it's already full. Good morning! <laughs> Hi Kay! Hi Bobby! So, today is my story. I'm gonna try and give you guys a short version as quick as I can. Maybe I should stand this way so you guys can see the background. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> my big hat is in the way, but anyway. So here we go. For you guys who don't know my story, um, Kenzo arrived at 31 weeks, so two months early. And basically, it just meant that I had to go to a hospital that was quite far away from me because the one that was close to me couldn't take care of babies, you know, before 34 weeks. So anywhere they could find a bed I had to go so if that was in Queensland then I had to go to Queensland <laughs> but thankfully yeah they found somewhere like an hour and a half away anyway I want to try and keep this story as short as possible and thank God I had a really good friend who basically said if you need anything I will stop everything and I will come and she looked after me because guys remember I don't have any family in Australia so anyway every day at this hospital was a new day it was basically the chance you know to buy time they wanted to keep him inside you know for 32 weeks because if you come any earlier than that his lungs are really really underdeveloped anyway there were two consultants and they both couldn't decide you know when to take the baby it was constantly you know like not fighting but one will say yes another will say no and it was really really frustrating for me anyway they finally did take him out so Kenzo spent his first six weeks of life in hospital oh man it was tough really really tough all this happened by emergency c-section so can you imagine I've never had a c-section before I couldn't even get into this on a whole nother topic I do not understand for the life of me why anyone would opt for a cesarean section is anyway so at um, this far hospital when he came there was some complications after the, the delivery so it was basically here's your son say hi and then say bye and off he went I was allergic to everything guys the main drug I think it's called endone I was allergic to that the one that I wasn't allergic to I can't remember the name of it for the life of me but whatever it was it made me dopey I was constantly um, <laughs> if you're talking to me I'll just be falling asleep it was hilarious now I can laugh about it but at the time it wasn't funny so anyway to, to get to the point he spent three weeks in um, the NICU at the fire hospital and then we got transferred back to my home hospital and he had another three weeks there now 
it's a smaller unit so there's not a lot of staff there's two nurses for 10 babies anyway remember i had a caesar i should be at home looking after myself you know so this wound can heal but i couldn't every single day every single day half eight i was at this hospital religiously they'll be like go home go eat go do this go do that i'm like no my baby's here i shouldn't even be driving guys i got in the car at three weeks i got in the car so i could drive to the hospital every morning so i can be with my baby then there was this one nurse i call her corella Devella. <laughs> <laughs> because she just did not want me there she constantly kept telling me to go home and go do this which is yeah I should have stayed home you know and you know look after myself so my wound can heal so I can look after you know because if I'm sick how can I then take you know Kenzo home to look after him anyway this nurse saw an opportunity everything that they needed to do was handed over for example MRI was supposed to be repeated at once he was six weeks and he was on probiotic and this particular probiotic they don't have it in small hospitals but this bigger hospital gave them everything that they needed but they kept challenging everything and that really frustrated me every even more so I would question everything that they did these people hated me I would question everything and then I can't remember what happened but basically I broke down I just started crying for like two days and this nurse saw this opportunity to call people call a counselor for me <sighs> I was so angry but I spoke to my mom my mom just kept me saying the entire time was because again I'm on my own she was like talk to these people so I did and this is why guys remember 31 weeks baby came out at 28 weeks when I was at home Kenzo normally moves about half past five in the morning he didn't move that day I was shitting myself my mom's like you need to go to the hospital I was like no because they're gonna take him out so I waited and I waited and I waited then later on in the day he started moving anyway at my 29 week appointment I don't know what they found I was admitted and that was it wasn't leaving hospital until he came out when the consultants were back and forth they can't decide if they should take him out or not it's because I didn't have any symptoms I didn't have headaches I didn't I wasn't getting seizures I just wasn't having any of the symptoms that they wanted for to justify them taking him out so early anyway once they took him out there was a complication they realized that the placenta was on its verge rupturing can you imagine if that placenta had ruptured the cancer would have freaking died that was my biggest concern that I was gonna lose my baby because the doctor who came to talk to me the first time so a, a babies who are born before 32 weeks this special the neonatologist comes to talk to the parent to let them know look although there's a good chance of baby surviving now there's still a chance that he could die so they had to make me aware of it anyway so that was the first complication the placenta almost ruptured then I was bleeding too much so I had to go in ICU so yeah I didn't see my baby for the first you know after I said hello that was it I didn't see him for a whole day so when I basically when I explained all this to the um the social worker she got it because the nurse she thought she was like I called the social um, worker for you. I'm a concerned that you may have postnatal depression. Look, at the time I was fuming, but I get it. Now I look back, I actually thank her. She saw something in me that made her think that I could have postnatal depression. Could you imagine if I did have postnatal depression? I would not have been able to take care of Kenzo today. So I thank her. So the whole point of me sharing this story is what I was saying in the first one education is key it doesn't matter just knowing you know the signs just knowing the signs and symptoms around mental health you can really impact someone's life you don't know who you can help someone might be talking to you today and they might be going through something and they might say certain things and if you know those signs and symptoms you could be like hey do you want to talk do you want me to refer you to someone you can really help people so that that's my whole point of my story so that's my story
around um, mental health. I didn't have postnatal depression. I, I know my own mind, but I could have, and thank God I didn't. So yeah. <laughs> there you have it. One in five mothers experience some sort of mental health throughout their pregnancy that is either left unnoticed or untreated. And this is why it's extremely important for us to have conversations around mental health, more specifically maternal mental health, so that we can raise awareness, so that we can continue to support and help our mothers and families. If you or a loved one has experienced or dealt with some sort of mental health, let me know in the comments. And whilst you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.